Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's book, Learn Python the Hard Way. You can get to the text by going to learnpythonthehardway.org and then clicking on Read the Free HTML Online. That'll take you to the table of contents. And right now, we are going to look at exercise 28, which is called Boolean Practice. Remember, um, Boolean logic after bool um, refers to true false statements. And if you click on that, it takes you to this page. And what Zed is asking us to do is use the truth tables we got in the last exercise and apply them to these 20 statements and try to decide on our own whether we think they would be true or false and then to test our answers by entering these into the terminal over here, which will give us a yes or no. And so what I have done is I've entered this text into Text Wrangler and I've put in a bunch of comments to explain why I think each of the answers is the way it is. Let's start with the first one here. The question is, um, oh, what I've done here is I've made it so that when I run the program, it will it will type print it will print out the question number, a space, then it'll have the actual expression itself, which will appear in um, uh, the command line as either just a true or a false. It evaluates that statement. And then I have in uh, parentheses and a question mark here what I believe the question's answer is. So for instance, first one, true and true. Well, when you have an and statement, this and that, for it to be true, both of them need to be true. And in this case they are, so that one will be true. Number two, it's false and false. Well, in an and statement, if either one of them, if anything is false, then the whole thing is false. So what I have here is false and it doesn't even matter what the second one is because the first one's false so the whole thing is false it's like you know what's zero times 1412 well the the other second number doesn't even matter because anything times zero is zero anything any and statement with a false is false and so that's all i need to go so that one's going to be false number three one equals is one. Now remember, this is the double equals, which is the Boolean meaning, is this equal to this? Not the same as the assignment operator, which is a single equal sign. So one equals to one and two is equal to one. All right, one equals to one, that's true. Two equal to one, that's false. And because it's an and statement, they both need to be true. But because they're not both true, the overall statement is false. Number four, test equals test. Well, the text is identical. The capitalization is the same, space is the same, everything is the same, so that's going to be true. Number five, one is equal to one or two is not equal to one. So one is equal to one, that's true. And because this is an or statement, if anything in there is true, then the whole thing is true, this or that or the other. And the first one is true, so the second one's totally irrelevant. That being said, two is not equal to one. That's true. Um, but it doesn't matter because the first one's true, so we can just leave it there, and the whole statement is true. Number six, true and one equals one. Well, that's true and true. Remember, because this is an and statement, it's asking if two things are true both at once, you have to evaluate both of them all the way through, and they all have to be true. So this one's going to be true. Number seven, false and zero not equal to zero. Well, false is false and zero not equal to zero. It turns out that because this is an and statement, the fact that the first one is false, I don't even have to evaluate the second one. Because remember, they both have to be true for it to be anything for it to, for it to be true. And the first one is false, so the second one's irrelevant, but zero not equal to zero, no, that's 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 false because zero is equal to zero. But because the first one is false, it doesn't even matter, so the whole statement is false. Number eight, true or one equal to one. The first statement it says is true, and because this is an or, I don't even need to go any further. I do know that one equal to one is true, but because I only need a single true for the entire statement to be true, because it's an or, not an and, because it's an or, the whole statement is true. Number nine, test equals testing false because the text is not identical. They need It needs to be exactly the same characters and the same capitalization, the same, it needs to be identical. These are not, so it's going to be false. 
Number 10. Let me bring this into the middle here. That oh, didn't move. Number 10. 1 not equal to 0 and 2 equal to 1. Well, 1 not equal to 0, that's true. But because this is an and statement, I have to check that everything is true. 2 equal to 1, that is false. And so the entire thing is false. Number 11, test not equal to testing. Well, they're not identical. And the exclamation mark equals asks, are they not equal to each other? And it is true that they are not equal to each other. So the entire statement is true. Number 12, test equals one. No, they're different from each other, so that's false. Okay, number 13, not true and false. Now, when you start getting these compound things, it, it helps to remember order of operations, just kind of start inside and evaluate things one at a time. And it's like I'm telling my kids when they do their algebra, show every step. And so what I do here is I copy down the not and the statement that's inside the parentheses, now, true and false. Remember, with an and, they both have to be true or the whole thing is false. So I turn it to false, not false, and the opposite of false is true. So there's that. Number 14, not 1 equals 1 and 0 not equal to 1. Again, complicated, but solve it one step at a time and write every step. So I put 1 not equal to 1, 0 equals 1. So that's not 1 is equal to 1, so that's true and zero not equal to one, that's true. This is an and statement, so if they are both true, the entire statement is true. So I copy down the not and put the true in there, and the opposite of true is false. So that's gonna be the answer to that one. Number 15, not 10 equals one or 1,000 equals 1,000. Again, copy it all down. 10 equals one is false, or 1,000 equals 1,000, that's true. Because it's an or statement, and only one of them has to be true, the entire statement is true. And so not true is equal to false. Number 16, not one not equal to 10 or three equal to four. Okay, copy it all down. One not equal to 10, that's true. And this is an or statement, so the rest of it's irrelevant because I only need a single or. But just in case you want to know, three equal to four, that's false, but it doesn't matter because the entire statement in the parentheses evaluates to true. And then it's not true, so it's it's equal to false. Number 17, not testing equals testing and Z equals cool guy. All right, testing equals testing. They're written exactly the same, so that's true. Z equals cool guy. Now, he may or may not be a cool guy, but the point is the text is not identical letter for letter. So that's false. This is an and statement. So because they're not all true, it's false as a as a whole. So there's false and not false is equal to true. Number 18, one equals one and not testing equals one or one equals zero. Again, write it down, solve it just step by step. One equals one is true. And then I go into the, the parentheses here, testing equals one. No, they're not identical. There's not identical characters in the same order. So that's false or one equals zero. That's also false. Now, an or, you only need one of them to be true, but both of these are false, and so it, it evaluates to false. So we now have true and not false. But so we take this second part here that says not false. Well, the opposite of false is true. That leaves us with true and true. And when both statements are true, the entire evaluation is true. That's a long one. We got through it. Next, chunky equals bacon and not three equals four or three equals three. All right, chunky equals bacon, that is false. And this is an and statement, so the rest of it doesn't matter because we have at least one false in there. But just in case you were wondering, uh, three equals four, that's false. Three equals three, that's true. That's an or, so it evaluates the true. Um, but not true is equal to false, so that's false and false. But with an and statement, if anything is false, the whole thing is false, and that's what we have here. And the last one, number 20, it's long. Three equals three and not testing equals testing or Python equals fun. Three equals three, that's true. I copy down the not and do testing equals testing. It's identical characters in the same order. That, so that's true. And because it's an or, the second part is actually irrelevant. I only need one thing to be true. But in case you were wondering, Python equals fun, that's false because they are not identical characters. 
Now, true or false evaluates to true. And here I have true and not true. So that's true and the opposite of true is false. So I have true and false. And that, again, because this one is an and, they both have to be true. They're not both true. One of them is false. So the entire statement is false. Okay, that's really long and wordy, but I want to see, I want to show you how I can evaluate it all automatically right here. Um, all I need to do is type in Python and then ex28.py, and you'll see how well I did. It's just going to print out the question number, whether Python evaluates it to true or false, and then compare it with my answer. And so here we go. True, true, false, 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 true, 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 false, true, false, 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 true, false, true, false, false, false. And it appears that I got them all right, so I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. Hopefully that'll make more sense as you work through it. And again, don't forget, you can just type these things into the command line also, also, and it will let you know what's going on. Anyhow, that's exercise 28. Hope that made sense, and I'll see you for 29.